Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Moreno. Our guests today are from Roanoke County-based Delta Dental of Virginia. Chris Pyle is the Vice President for Marketing, Customer Experience, and Government Relations at Delta Dental of Virginia. Polly Rabel is Executive Director of the Delta Dental of Virginia Foundation. And Chris and Polly, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Um, tell us a little bit about Delta Dental of Virginia, uh, Chris, and, and why it's he headquartered in Roanoke. You, why not Richmond or the Nova or something? That's a good question. Uh, there are 39 Delta Dental companies around the country covering all 50 states in D.C. and Puerto Rico. And they're in interesting locations, and it all comes down to the person that founded the company at the time and where they happen to be living. So 1964, uh, the, the year the Beatles broke out, it's also the year Delta Dental Virginia broke out, uh, the year we were founded right here in little old Roanoke. And... Um, went from a couple employees um, offering a very basic dental plan to students and processing claims on paper on the floor, just literally laying them on the floor, and uh, to uh, now we have over 250 employees. In, in Virginia? Right here, uh, almost all of them here in Roanoke. We have a few people um, in Richmond and, and Tidewater and Northern Virginia as well, but uh, we went from you know, little bitty company back then to today, we cover more than 2 million people and uh, we'll process 4 million claims right here in Roanoke and answer the phone more than 650,000 times. Wow. In that building, mostly in that building on Starkey Road, I live right down the road. Before COVID, it was all in that building. Right. <laughs> and now those phones are being answered all over the place. Yeah, I was wondering about that. How did COVID affect that? Are, are people still working at home or did you outsource some of that or what? We didn't outsource any of it. We figured out real quickly how to uh, adapt and fix our, uh, adjust our systems to allow employees to go and work from home. Um, it's, it's a, it was a big thing to accomplish because we're a highly regulated uh, industry uh, for good reason. We want to maintain uh, the security of all of that data. We, we deal with a ton of data, personal data, financial data, health related data certainly and uh, to equip our employees to quickly go home and do their jobs was a challenge, but we pulled it off without a hitch, honestly. And we had to get creative with some things. Uh, for instance, we would have employees, maybe their internet connection wasn't, wasn't sufficient. So we um, provided them a stipend to help them pay for higher speed mm -hmm. internet in some cases. And we, we just had to do a lot of things like that. But honestly, even now that we're returning back to the office, um, a lot of people probably never will. <laughs> the, the building is much uh, more empty than it was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's going to change for a lot of businesses. Um, uh, Polly Rabel is the, uh, you were Delta Dental of Virginia Foundation. Um, you are the executive director. Tell, talk about the Delta Dental of, uh, of Virginia Foundation and how it ties into the business model for selling insurance policies. Sure, so um, the, the mission of the foundation is to create healthy smiles for all Virginians, and that means all. So it doesn't matter where you live or what your socioeconomic status is. We wanna make sure that folks have access to oral health care. So um, we really focus on three particular areas. Uh, we support the oral health safety net, which the safety net um, is really a network of providers across the Commonwealth who provide free or charitable service and or um, service at a, on a pay scale based on what you make. So um, these safety net providers, there are hundreds of locations across the Commonwealth and a good portion of the money that we spend in the community is spent on those safety net providers, ensuring that they're there for children and families and that, that they can get good care. We also um, spend quite a bit of money boosting prevention. So we work with schools and do a lot of oral health education. And lastly, we um, our third focus area is accelerating learning. So we do um, a lot of scholarships 
and um, when we find best practices that we know work really well, we try our best to accelerate those across the Commonwealth so that more people can benefit from them. Best practices as far as what? As far as oral health care. So, um, for instance, we know that school-based oral health care programs work really well. So you have a lot of folks across the country who work hourly jobs, very hard for them to get off work. There's lots of barriers, including transportation, to being able to get your oral health care. A lot of dentist offices are open eight to five. So what happens is we, we know from lots of studies that school-based oral health care, being able to bring dental providers into the school and provide care there is a very successful model. And so we have worked really hard with the Department of Health and the Department of Education and Virginia Health Catalyst to increase the number of school-based programs in Virginia, and we continue to look to do that. So that's an example of kind of trying to take a best practice and blow it up, if you will, expand it. So what's in it for Delta Dental? What's in it for Delta Dental? There's a couple of things. Um, you know, number one, when we were founded, we were always founded as a community-based, mission-driven organization. And so this is part of our mission. It's part of what we do. Um, we have an incredible employee base, which, which Chris has mentioned. They are so committed to this work. We have tried to involve them in a number of ways in this work, and they have responded like no other. So they, they want to see this happen. We were founded as, as a community-minded, mission-focused organization, so this is, this is us living out our mission. Mm -hmm. And I guess one way to even look at it is if kids grow up with better families, better oral health, well, ultimately it's going to be lower policy well, costs for everybody. Absolutely, absolutely. And better, and better habits. Sure. We got uh, our employees for, uh, we weren't doing a great job t informing our employees about all the things we were doing for a while. We kind of just got used to doing it. And we decided, you know what, we really need to remind ourselves why we do what we do. Why do we come to work every day? And it really made a huge impact on our employees. We showed a video at one of our holiday parties and, and just told real stories of real people. Their testimonials of, of a person who has a job now that was too ashamed to go to a job interview because he was ashamed of his smile. Right. And we left that, that uh, luncheon in tears. And that made such a huge impact on our employees because I think now more than ever, people want to go to work and believe that they're doing something. Mm -hmm. Making a difference mm -hmm. some, making somehow. Making a difference, exactly. And, and that's what we do, and we're passionate about it. It's, it's in our DNA, and the foundation's a huge part. And before the foundation was even formed, we did all of this just through the corporation. We, we made, for years and years, we've made millions of dollars of donations to charity dental clinics and uh, universities and, and things like that, but we finally got around to saying, you know what, let's formalize this with the foundation so we can get more strategic and, and have even bigger impact. Hmm. I want to talk I want briefly about some of your backgrounds with Jeremy sent me. Um, uh, Paula, you're, you're, um, you have a master's from the University of North Carolina in public health, and uh, your undergrad was at Longwood. Yes, so this was a good year for basketball. Both the men and women amazing. Longwood made it for the first time ever, and the heels made it to the final. It was an amazing year for me for basketball, for sure, for all those reasons, yeah. And I was lucky enough to be able to go to some of those games and to see the interaction up close and personal between the coaches and our students. And Which games? Did you go to? Uh, I went to all the playoff games in Charlotte for oh, wow. both the men and the women. I was not able to go to the one way out west, but um, it was to, to see that bond and to see the way they, they respect and adore each other was the greatest thing. And my daughter, who is 12, went with me to the last women's game. And they were behind. Um, and it was pretty clear in the last two minutes they weren't going right. to catch up. And to see them fight the last two minutes like they fought the first two minutes, greatest example for her that I could have asked for. It was great. And UNC went out by beating Duke, not too bad, huh? I know. I, I felt a little torn because <coughs> it was Coach K's last right. game. But yeah, yeah. So it, it, it was all, it was a good year for me in basketball, yeah. And uh, Chris, Chris Pyle, I want to talk about you. You were a, a health policy advisor and speechwriter for Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee for 10 years. Um, you also were a drummer for his rock and roll band, uh, Capital Offense. You opened for <laughs> Willie Nelson, uh, Charlie Daniels Band, Grand Funk Railroad, 38 Special. Uh, what, what was that like? That it was, it what was, was he like? He seems like an interesting cat. He's exactly like you would think he would be. He's just the most personable guy. Um, if you're at a, ever at a, a big event, he's going to be the last one out because he's shaking every hand, um, the servers to, to the, the VIPs. He's just a down-to-earth guy. But uh, that was a 
such a fun season of life. Um, when the governor, when you, when you work for a governor who's also running for president and he's the bass player in your band, you get invited to places that you probably shouldn't get invited to. Uh, but uh, so we opened up for Willie Nelson, Charlie Daniels. We played the House of Blues, Red Rock Amphitheater. In Denver, outside of Denver, been yeah. there many times. Great mm -hmm. place. Um, it's just, it was so fun. We, uh, we called ourselves Capital Offense because we said by the end <laughs> of the event, uh, we will have offended everybody. <laughs> But it was fun. It was such a, a great season of life. I'll never forget it. By the way, the president of Blue Ridge PBS, Will Anderson, played with Hootie and the Blowfish, so maybe you guys can start a band. Nice. So. I still have my drum kit, so if there you go. Play, you for play any more for stress release or anything? Or? Yeah, I have a, my wife yells at me when I do it too much, so I don't get to very often. But oh, okay. Uh, Polly, uh, the Delta Dental of Virginia Foundation, I guess I'm told is celebrating a 10th year anniversary. Yes. What have been some of the milestones you think over the past 10 years? Sure. So um, it is our 10 year anniversary. We're delighted about it. And um, I, when I look back, I'm, I've only been here a short time, but looking back and being able to kind of dig into our history, I'm, I'm so proud of, of what we've been able to do. We've given over $6 million um, across the Commonwealth to some of these safety net organizations and for oral health programs. Through our oral health programs, we, we have educated on average about 16,000 students a year. So it's a, it's a large number. Through our scholarships that Chris mentioned, we've given over 100 scholarships to, to um, folks who, in dentistry. So we really made significant impacts on growing the workforce, doing a lot of oral health education, and we're really proud of that and want to keep moving that momentum forward. And I know we've talked about this before, but oral health is really key to a lot of the health issues. Bad, poor oral health can affect a lot of other health-related issues. It absolutely, absolutely does. It's associated with heart disease, diabetes, a lot of different um, uh, health Correct. risks associated with, with oral health. So it's really important that people use their, their dental benefits and they go to the dentist and we really work hard to get our, our subscribers to use their benefits, go, because uh, your preventive benefit uh, visits are all, usually cost you zero. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason not to go. So that's a, it's a big passion of ours, and, and we work really hard to get our um, subscribers to the dentist's office. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Delta Dental sells individual policies as well as group policies, correct? We do. We have about 100,000 people that have individual coverage from us. Uh, a lot of employers don't offer dental insurance. Of course, retirees uh, need, need some source of uh, dental insurance as well, and, and that's becoming a very significant part of, of what we do. And dental, dental, uh, dental insurance, if you're deciding between two jobs and one has dental insurance, I, that's, you know, that's reasonable. That seems to me that would be a big selling point. It is. And it, in surveys, it's either second or third most requested benefit from employees. And in talking with employers right now, their number one need and, and um, challenge is keeping and retaining talent. Mm -hmm. We're hearing that over, and we're, we're seeing it ourselves. Really, yeah. Yeah, so it, it's a real challenge right now. The, the job market is, is hot. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. We've had, like, record job growth, but there's still record people quitting, mm -hmm. and, you know, people are kind of looking around. They want more money, that type of thing. So it's, I guess it's a – and I, w with what you do, you really like to hold on to some people. They have a lot of institutional memory, and every time you have to train somebody, you could be spending ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to train somebody. True, and, and post-COVID – the world is flatter than it's ever been because you can work from anywhere. Sure. And now that uh, employers, employers and employees have figured that out, the <laughs> it's really opened up a lot of opportunities and challenges. Yeah, well, it's one of the selling points for Roanoke, the regional partnership, is you can work for a company in Nova, but you can live here. Absolutely um, right. That type of thing. I wanted to talk about something you guys are involved with. Uh, recently cut the ribbon on the, on the new Lyft Clinic. Mm -hmm. at Fallon Park Elementary School in Southeast Roanoke. It's typically one of the more underserved parts of the city. Um, Carillion Clinic, Delta Dental, Freedom First, uh, Roanoke City Public Schools. Uh, it's the Local Impact for Tomorrow uh, Center or Lyft. And this is a clinic or a community thing that will, I guess, initially be for the students and the parents of the kids that go there, but ultimately be opened up to the community. Talk about why Delta Dental would get involved with something like that. Sure. So uh, every year, uh, hospitals have to do something called a community health needs assessment. And Carillion had been doing these community health needs assessments. And repeatedly, uh, the health outcomes in the Fallon Park District were just not as high as the rest of Roanoke. And, 
and they were really interested in trying to um, try to improve those health outcomes. So they came to Delta Dental and they got Freedom First to the table and they got Roanoke City Public Schools and this group started brainstorming what, what could we do to help. So while the Lift Center does have a clinic attached to it, it is actually much more than that. So there are um, preventive health services that are offered there, oral health services that are offered there, but we are also doing things like um, financial education through Freedom First to try to really help families make the best use of their dollars and, and in hopes that we can increase the overall health of that community some. So, but I think one of the really key pieces to it is not those four partners, but the families themselves. So we are inviting them to play a, a really active role. We want to, to work with them to meet the needs that they currently have and that they you know, will evolve over time. So we are trying our best to really include uh, the families, and yes, we will focus first on the children, then move <coughs> to some of the parents of those children, and hopefully open it up a little more broadly over time. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't make the ribbon cutting, but it looked like there was a lot of excitement at that, at that event, and I know working with the school district and all that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our CEO attended, and uh, you know, it's, it's right in our backyard. Um, Delta Dental of Virginia is headquartered here and, and we that's important to us that we take care of our own community mm -hmm. so you'll see us um, doing a lot of things in our community we're also doing things all across the state as Polly mentioned we we really have sustained the safety net all across the state but uh, finding those partnerships locally is really important to us do you think the lift center could be maybe a model for other you know endeavors in other parts of Virginia underserved parts Absolutely. So school-based health centers are a national model um, that have worked very well in other parts of the nation. There are a couple of here, a couple that are here in Virginia, but not quite the same as, as the Live Center. So our, our goal would be to replicate this model um, once we have figured out how to make it work the best that we can. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, I was reading that you've got more than 20 years of experience working with vulnerable populations in a variety of industries and settings, including sta state and local government, nonprofits, and foundations. So this, this foundation's mission really hits home with you. Huh? Talk about some of your background. Sure. Um, so again, my whole life has been working with vulnerable populations, and I have been lucky enough to work for a number of, of foundations, both statewide and, and other. Um, I've worked in a hospital system where um, I was patient experience officer, so really working one-on-one -on -one with patients to understand what their needs are and to be able to interpret between the clinical community and the patients uh, was an important part of my job. I see that as the very same thing here, being able to interpret between what the community needs, what the corporation has, and, and how, do we, how do we make a fit for everyone. But, but that mission of Healthy Smiles for All Virginians is really important it's it's a very important mission and and that's what i get to do every day is try to help make sure that that nobody's left behind and it's honestly just a pleasure mm -hmm. love it by the way how is the foundation funded is is, is it all come from delta dental or, or is any money raised on the outside or what yeah the the foundation traditionally has gotten all of their money from the corporation mm -hmm. that is true but for the Lyft Clinic, for example, um, we tapped into another partner, um, AEP, and they helped also fund. So we're, we're starting to look at, um, you know, opening that up a little bit and seeing if there are other ways that we can bring money in, again, just to, to put back into the community. Especially if you can find a common cause. Absolutely, for a absolutely, of yep. I, uh, I wanted to go back to the COVID era, mm -hmm. as unpleasant as that sounds, but um, you know, outside of, how has COVID, do you think, affected the dental industry in, 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 in general? Well, uh, it's, it was, there was a, a stretch of time there where it was really tough, uh, of course, when their offices were shut down. And, you know, we, one of the benefits of being a, a local company is we really had a good finger on the pulse of what was going on. And we acted real fast. One of the things we did was send um, funds to at-risk dental clinics. And we looked around and we, we kind of did an assessment of which dentists were in a lot of debt. Because dentists that come out of dental school um, come out with an average of something like $300,000 of debt. Yikes. North of that, actually. 
And so if you're coming out of dental school and starting a dental practice, um, that's tight. So we, we provided some grant funding to dentists. Um, and then when there were increased safety protocols that were being put on dentists as their offices started to open back up, now all of a sudden they're incurring additional expenses with PPE and masks and all these things. So we sent an additional $3 million to all of our network dentists in Virginia. We didn't ask for them to apply for it. We didn't, we just sent it to them. And we just wanted to do, be a good partner with the dentist. Uh, I think coming out of COVID, what you're finding is the, the labor market is hurting them. And some of that's probably COVID related. Some of it's just probably economics, but hygienists are in very short supply mm. right now. So if, if there are any, any, if there's anyone out there wanting to be a hygienist, there are a lot of opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. But um, I think things are starting to get back to normal in terms of the, the volumes of people that they're seeing. We're seeing that certainly in the claims. So was there such a thing as teledentistry during the? Yes. I mean, obviously you can't fix somebody's tooth through the computer screen, but right. talk about how that worked. That's a good point. We, we, did, we actually increased reimbursement on certain teledentistry services during COVID. And we entered into a new relationship with a teledentistry provider, teledentistry.com, um, during that uh, as well that we're going to maintain going forward. And, you know, you don't see a, a ton of utilization there because you're right, a dental visit is really hard to do over teledentistry. But uh, the technology is good enough that you can have a consultation with a the dentist. They can see your mouth. They can tell you whether or not it's an emergency situation or if you uh, help you refer, refer you to for an appointment, maybe give you some uh, some things you could do to mitigate pain in the short term. So there are some applications of it for sure. Mm. You know, you mentioned the debt that these uh, dentists come out of school with. That's got to be really hard to get them into some underserved areas you know, where, the, where, the, where the population a lot of times can't afford services. So that's... Uh, uh, how do you overcome that? Is that something like the foundation can help overcome? Yeah, so, and, and we do, but it is, you know, COVID also hit the safety net incredibly hard as well. So all the things that Chris said, plus trying to recruit people to maybe communities that, that don't have a, a nice big metropolis or maybe not the best schools, things of that nature. It is, it is really a challenge. It's probably the biggest challenge for safety net providers is, is recruitment and retention of the workforce, both dentists, dental hygienists, dental assistants. Um, and so the majority of our grant money goes towards um, salaries for, for the dental workforce in those safety nets. That's where the majority of our money goes. We also, um, this year, for instance, are starting a partnership with the ODU School of Dental Hygiene. We're recruiting high schoolers, so 10th, 11th, and 12th graders, who um, may be interested in, in dentistry to come to a summer camp. So we'll have a virtual summer camp for them this year to introduce them to the world of dentistry and, and try to get more and more people into this workforce because it's not only needed on the private side, it's needed on you know the safety net side. So we're, we're constantly looking at not only just the grants, but how do, we, how do we create that pipeline that brings more and more folks mm -hmm. in? And even if they're interested maybe in being a hygienist instead of a dentist itself or going to, or at I, least starting off as a hygienist. Absolutely. We would love that too. We, th those positions are needed. All, all three of those positions are, are, um, are really needed across the entire yeah, common. I know my dentist is at, my dentist, saw, they've had a hard time holding on to people. It's been kind of, a, it seemed like before COVID, I saw the same person for years and years. And now it's been right. kind of robbed. We've only got a couple of minutes, minutes left. I wanted to talk about a couple of things. One of them is, um, you know, Virginia Tech Carilion Campus at one end, and then you've got, uh, I know Mike, Michael Freeland, who directs that at the uh, Freeland Institute, envisions this tech corridor going all the way down to basically the 419 area. Do you see yourself as part of that tech corridor? A huge part of it. We are, in many respects, a technology company. When, we, when you process 4 million claims, it's, there's a lot of sophisticated programming that goes into that, and we actually built our own system. So our IT needs are significant. And so we're constantly looking to um, beef up our, um, our workforce in that area. And we're hoping that you know, the, the allure of this area, all the things that you mentioned about Roanoke, I've lived here going on 10 years. It's my favorite place I've ever lived. It's the beauty of the mountains. There's no traffic, mm. the quality of life, the schools, this is a fantastic place to live. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we need to 
be selling that message as much as possible because the the technology talent that's out there there's a lot for the, that this place has to offer and we just need to get them here and visit and then keep them. Mm -hmm. Just have about a minute or so left, but I wanted to just talk about uh, some of the things Delta Dental does in public. I know that uh, Delta Dental is, uh, of Virginia has supported golf tournaments in the past. You're on the first tee of Roanoke Valley Board. I, think, I believe you're supporting some concerts this summer. Why is it important to get your name out there like that? We just decided I want to be all the places people smile. We believe everyone deserves a, a healthy smile, and I want to be all the places people smile. So you're going to start seeing our brand at concerts. You're going to see us at hockey games. You're going to see us at Salem Red Sox, the Squirrels in Richmond. Uh, that's just where we want to be. We're all about protecting people's smiles, giving you a healthy smile. And if I can associate Delta Dental's brand with a smile, then I've done something good. Might be time to crank up the band again, huh? <laughs> Polly, real quick, a foundation will continue its work and. Uh Absolutely, we have a big year planned. We um, we have a a employee led fund, so our employees are actively involved in creating volunteer opportunities and and in giving out some of our dollars. And we we have a huge year plan. We're really excited about about the next step, and and we're looking forward to working hand in glove with the safety net to try to understand what their needs are and how we might be able to meet them. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Polly Rabel and Chris Pyle from Delta Dental of Virginia. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm Gene Moreno. This is Business Matters, and thanks for joining us.